we like to call it the supernatural hour. And now, our hosts. So you, you did mention that with sleep paralysis, it's your body's attempt to kind of keep you from hurting yourself. Right. But there's the inverse of sleep paralysis, and that's sleepwalking. Right. This is where people are up and moving while they are asleep, or at least maybe not in the deepest parts of sleep, but so, still sleeping. They have no recollection of what they're doing. Yeah, afterwards. And, and that's a whole kind of the inverse of the sleep paralysis, right. I would think, of, you know, up wandering around, doing things but not without really any there. consciousness. Mm-hmm. And yet doing things relatively safely, like going up and down stairs. And, right. So they're not in the deepest stages of sleep. They're not in REM sleep necessarily, but they are in a deeper level of sleep. So they don't have awareness, but their body is perceptive to their environment. It's kind of like when I'm driving sometimes and I get there and it's like, how did I get here? Yeah, basically like hypnosis. <laughs> and that's terrifying, just so you know. <laughs> if you are on TikTok, I haven't followed her, but she pops up on my feed every once in a while. There's the lady that sleepwalks. Klaus is shaking his head. He knows what I'm talking about. It's this lady, she sleepwalks. And she does it so much that she's put cameras around her house to film herself. And she'll kind of go through and, and narrate it for you, you know, by putting words. And, you know, she does things like she'll hide behind. And I, the way she narrates it, you know, being awake, you can tell that she kind of remembers what was going on. Because she'll say, right now I'm hiding in a, you know, in a forest. And she's, you know, hiding behind a tree. And she does the funniest things that I need to follow her because she's kind of hilarious. I don't know her name. Does she she's lock married. herself in her home so she doesn't get out? She's married or, or has a partner of some sort because he's in there yeah. as well. Make sure he doesn't. she doesn't do something. Yeah, but it, it's funny. Oh, I'll have to look for her name. But on, probably, on I mean, if you go to TikTok and just search for Sleepwalker, it'll probably come right up. A little blog lady. And while you're out there at the TikTok, get our TikTok. Hey, shameless plug. Yep. Advanced Paranormal, right? Or is it Advanced Dot Paranormal? Advanced Dot Paranormal. One of the two. Okay. So one of the things that, um, if you if you think you're having sleep paralysis or you, you are having sleep paralysis, you know, you'll want to take care of the medical problems if there are any medical problems. And so one of the things that I saw several times was re- keep a journal, you know, like a dream journal, but keep a sleep paralysis journal. Because when you go to the doctor, it helps doctors to know everything. You know, if you go in with a whole bunch of I don't know, they're like, oh. Right. Right. You can only assume, right, at that point. So, you know, not only maybe keep a little journal of when it happens, you know, whatever you think is important. What did you eat the night before? When did you go to sleep? Just journal everything. And then know your medical history, if possible. And I realize that sometimes if you're adopted or or whatever, that could be a little difficult. But if you know it, you know, be prepared to answer that too. Because the more information Doc has, the better they can diagnose and treat whatever the symptom might be. Well, like I said, this isn't an uncommon thing, but it shouldn't be a frequently occurring thing, right? Like we see people who have cases of this, but if this is something that's happening on a regular basis, we need to determine if there's an underlying cause. Do you have sleep apnea? Do you have narcolepsy? And those are things that we can actually test and quantify and, you know, and effectively treat, which may fix the problem. Uh, you, You know, it's easy to, like I said, I've had it happen one time. I didn't go seek out you know, a doctor to say, hey, what happened? But if it was something that was happening to me every week, yeah, I'd probably go get looked at and make sure now, there's, everything's okay. Let's say you take care of the medical thing first, and it just does not seem to be helping. And you've gone to the doctor, you've journaled your sleep apnea, you know, you've, you've given the proper medical history to the best of your knowledge, and you're still having it, then maybe you give us a call. So let's come see if it is something paranormal, because I, I won't rule that completely out. I was going to say, if you feel like you've been probed, maybe give <laughs> wow. us a call. <laughs> wow. a place to take it. I'm just saying, or maybe if you've got scratches on your body, those are not normal so things. I mean, or probably some bruising. Yeah, that's not yeah. normal with sleep paralysis, just saying. So I've got some stories of some nighttime visitors, and you can put it in the medical aspect. You can put it in the paranormal aspect. Pepsi. <laughs> so, but here's some stories. And if you read, if you remember Romeo and Juliet, there's a little nighttime sleep paralysis visitor in Shakespeare. But we're not going to go there. So, a witch. Witches are very common. 
and it happens worldwide. It's not just, you know, a certain area. They get, we get witch stories from the United States, Brazil, Newfoundland, to Germany, Scandinavia. And is this in conjunction, which stories in conjunction with sleep paralysis? Yeah. Okay. Just, you know, when you're, you know, Doc sees a werewolf, some people see witches. And these generally involve a witch. Um, sometimes they refer to them a hag or some woman of some sort who sits on the sleeper's chest that induces terrifying dreams and causes the inability to breathe or move. And during the European and American witch trials, you know, in the 17th century, um, this is one of the things that when they were trying witches, they would accuse them of, of keeping people from sleeping and shape-shifting into a cat. So that's where we get some of the, the cat folklore. It's from these, these witches that sit on people's chests and they transfigure so that you can yeah, it's a very classic story, is something sitting on the chest, because, and I think from a sleep paralysis standpoint, it's a matter of you can't breathe, and your brain's trying to make sense of why, and you're still kind of in that dream phase, and so it's like, oh, there's something terrifying sitting on my chest, making it difficult for me to breathe. I had that happen once, and it was the cat. Sitting on it? my chest. No. Did it turn into a witch? <laughs> no. Was it? it was it, just a cat. It was the cat. It's like, Leo... Get off now. <laughs> Our cat? Our cat. Trying to murder you. <laughs> it's not okay. the cat. And so another very common one, oddly enough, is a ghost. Go figure. Um, for about 2,000 years in a lot of Asian countries, sleep paralysis was attributed to ghosts laying on top of you. And... Um, in some legends, the ghosts are recently deceased locals or relatives, and in others, it's like some specific ghost that's maybe not necessarily related, it's just always there. So an example is in Thailand, it's believed that sleep paralysis is caused by a widow ghost known as Phi Am, who sleeps on the chest of, of these sleep paralysis victims. And to defend against her, there would be men that would put lipstick on before going to bed because they thought if we wear lipstick, this female ghost isn't going to come mess with us. Because, because you're a guy with lipstick on? That, that's what it says. Ghosts, I did not make this up. The ghost doesn't like the lady boys, is what we're saying. Okay. No, because they'll come in and go, oh, this is a woman, we'll leave them alone. Oh. So if you go to Thailand, and you know, a man's wearing the lipstick, I mean, in these days and ages, you know, who knows, but... They will probably proposition you. Probably trying to, <laughs> to keep a sleep paralysis. <laughs> or they'll proposition you. <laughs> Or they're going through a transition, just don't ask. That's it's right. Your business. That's right. Right. Mind your own. So, a demon. <laughs> Anybody surprised by, by demons? No, that's what I ran into. So, this is the most commonly occurring in Middle East or African countries. And it's attributed to, again, the demons um, crouching on the chest in order to suffocate them because they're evil and they're trying to kill you. And this dated back even to ancient Arabian mythology. And they believed that it was winged demons would pounce on the chest of the sleepers who had not been praying because they pray five times a day. And so, you know, hey, you only prayed three times today, I'm gonna suffocate you in your sleep. I'm gonna wow. trampoline your chest. Let's it's pretty, do it. Pretty hardcore. <laughs> so, um, and this was only about 20 years ago, there was actually some mass hysteria along the coast of East, East Africa about a winged, a bat winged humanoid. So I always just go right to Wizard of Oz. You know, the, the, the flying monkeys. monkeys. Yeah, so a bat, bat winged humanoid, that's hard to say. And its name was Popobawa. That's hard to say, too. Not as hard as bat winged humanoids. It's apparently. not in East Africa. He didn't stumble over <laughs> Popobawa. Um, and he assaults and crushes the chest of sleeping victims until they pass out. But this was only 20 years ago. And there's like mass hysteria. Um, vampires are very common in sleep paralysis. We live really close to Camp Williams. So there's the helicopters again. Um, I can hear them this time. <laughs> we like to play this game of what kind of helicopters are they? Oh. And you go outside and stare. Okay, but back to that. Are we sure they're not the NSA helicopters? Oh, great. Possibly. Abduction. They live right next door to each other. I know. We live <laughs> next door to the NSA, too. <laughs> so um, back to vampires. So vampires, of course, are undead individuals, right, who not only um, 
will cause this lip paralysis that then they suck your blood. Yeah. This is most common, shockingly enough, in southeastern Europe and was really, really big in the 18th century. When vampires were really, really popular? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, they're not the sparkly vampires that we think of today, thanks to Twilight. They're not Edward. Nope. They're um, the these were always sucking fiends. I know. No sparkly designer clothes. These were usually bloated and ruddy. Oh. Wait, what? That's lovely. Ruddy. The vampires were bloated and ruddy? Bloated and ruddy. That is not what I was picturing when no. I was thinking vampire. So, not even, been... not even a Bram Stoker. Oh, no. Kind of. Or even the Van Helsing girls? No. No. Not, not them either? They said bloated and ruddy. <laughs> I'm going to pass on this vampire thing. Yeah. And no so, Tom Cruise. Yeah. No, no Tom Rod Cruise. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm. So it, it says that the diaries of Bram Stoker, the, the creator, um, actually his, his ideas for Dracula stemmed from a sleep paralysis episode that he had. Oh. And his hallucination was a woman trying to kiss him on the neck. And so it was kind of Dracula. Interesting. Yep. Okay. And then, again, none of these are, are shocking the alien. A lot of people who have alien experiences. And in the 1950s, there was just an explosion of alien abduction movies, alien movies, UFO movies, you know, testimonies of, of people in North America primarily, you know, being abducted. And um, people were claiming that they were paralyzed, couldn't move, screaming with fear, not being able to do anything, kind of your standard sleep paralysis um, symptoms. And many abductees also described feeling themselves floating to the sky and bright lights and probing. See? Go on. I really? told you so. Oh, you got your <laughs> probing action. Just saying. Right. So those are kind of kind of the, the main what the main five. Yeah. They all have that classic overlay of I am defenseless, I can't move. Yeah. There is something that may have malintent and it's either attacking me or you know, at least creating fear. And and there seems like different levels. Like there's kind of the level where there's something just out of sight or something that you're not able to see or move, right. kind of like your experience with the werewolf. Right. Um, or, but the others seem very like, involved where there's yeah. something happening right to them and they're seeing it as they're you know, right. in the middle of, of doing it and they're, you know, they're, they're being abducted by it's, aliens yeah, or something that's, that's going on visually within them. Right. And where I think this is a, you know, where this is a transition from kind of non-REM to REM sleep, I think some of that may depend on, be dependent on how close you are to actual REM, whether it's more dreamlike or whether it's more based in reality with some strange overlays, you know, with, if, if you're on one end of that spectrum, when the, when the consciousness occurs, you know, maybe you'll be more apt to have a vivid dream and a more realistic feeling dream, I guess, for you. I mean, even mine felt pretty real, but I could tell I was in my bedroom and I could tell, you know, everything looked the same. I could just feel that presence on the side. And I don't know if that was just my mind trying to explain why I wasn't able to move. But for me, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't super descript. Like I said, I couldn't even see it until I basically turned my head and heard a big sound and woke up all the way. Uh, but maybe these people that are being lifted in the air or transported into spaceships or whatever. We're gonna and probed. So, we're going to get so much hate now. So I'm telling everyone they all got <laughs> sleep paralysis. It's going to be great. Um, maybe they're just closer to REM sleep. Like you said, I, I do believe a small percentage could be paranormal. So if you believe yours is paranormal, we're not, we're not calling you them. You've been listening to The Supernatural Hour at AdvancedParanormal.com. The Supernatural Hour is part of the Radio Ronin Network found at RadioRonin.com. Copyright 2021 by Advanced Paranormal Services.